Hello my friends and channel subscribers, Greg here from Brisbane, Australia with another uncut, unedited, no bore video. Recently I posted a couple of videos about EV, EV charging, reason to get EV and things like that. And majority of the questions that I got surprised me a lot. The majority of the question was about range anxiety. And I understand point of view of people that asking that question but I can assure you there is no such thing because range anxiety could be literally in any fuel powered car I think people didn't have range anxiety in petrol and diesel cars because it was so fast to refuel them but if you travel through the parts of your country where petrol stations are not that frequent you might of get range of anxiety especially when you got big sign next petrol station 600 kilometers um, I mean that's all uh, great and dandy but in Australia uh, 600 kilometers usually um, distance between petrol stations somewhere in the middle of nowhere when temperatures are hot when uh, if you turn air conditioning on, your fuel consumption may prevent you to travel the distance. And my question is, how people back then did not get range anxiety? And the answer is simple. They carry jerry cans with them. Now, this video is not about to convince you that electric car is better, different. It's just um, really different. Different not in a way uh, that is better than petrol or diesel car. Better is... Um, First of all, we need to understand whether it's fit for purpose, what you're using it for. And uh, fit for purpose means if you're in the city and doing short distance travels, you stop, start, there's nothing better than electric vehicle uh, from a point of uh, energy delivery into the motion. If you got long distance travel, there's nothing better than diesel car. If you got... Um, performance requirements or other requirements and our petrol car could be phenomenal for you so I think everyone should choose car that um, designed for intended use so because I'm not often driving um, outside the city um, I drive mostly in the city my energy consumption my electric vehicle is much better than actual advertised so today's video is not about that I'm not promoting electric vehicles but I'm here to kind of describe what is charging will give you in a driving sense because people I think understand liters for kilometers but they struggle to understand how much energy they need in the electric car to move forward by the way uh, I'll start with assumption that every electric car has different consumption so I think I could be wrong please don't hammer me for that but I think Tesla uh, model 3 model Y would consume somewhere between 14 to 17 kilowatts uh, per hundred kilometers depends on the driving and roads and all of that uh, I've got Kia uh, e Nero uh, or Kia, Kia Nero EV the call right now and my average consumption between 11 to 14 kilowatts uh, per hundred kilometers yes it's more efficient than tesla for a number of reasons and i'm not claiming that it's a better car this video is not about that i just trying to explain how much charge do you need to move that car forward so uh, to start with i would like to differentiate two types of charging there's a dc charging and ac charging so dc charging is basically what people call fast charger why is fast charger because batteries are DC and station is DC so it's basically talking to batteries in native language and you can jam electricity in a much faster rate so the assumption is that fast charges are somewhere between 30 to 350 kilowatt an hour delivery why I'm not saying kilowatt but kilowatt an hour this is how many kilowatts you can put to the battery in one hour assuming ideal conditions right so that's the one scenario the second one is you got AC charging where you connect to your um, household PowerPoint or just public uh, what they call slow charging 
Why it's slow? Not because you don't have enough electricity there, because you need to convert from AC to DC, and the conversion happening in your in onboard inverter. The inverter is in the car, and most of the inverter limited by 12 kilowatts, and useful inversion is up to 11.9 kilowatts. I call it 11 uh, kilowatt an hour charger. So I will start with the slowest charge, so I understand how much electricity you put in in kilometer sense, and we'll move to faster charging. The assumption only that your car, which is my car, consumes 14 kilowatts uh, and uh, 200 kilometers uh, electricity. And then I move towards battery capacity and what that means, all right? So, if you plug your car into power socket, in Australia it's 240 volts at 10 amps, and after conversion you may get 2.3 kilowatts of electricity an hour. That means, in my case of my car consumption, I am adding electricity to the car at the rate of 16 kilometers an hour. So every hour that I charge, at 16 kilometers off range, right? Sounds slow, but if you think that, you know, you're driving around 50 to 100 kilometers a day and you plug overnight for 10 hours, you're adding 160. So it's like your mobile phone, you know, when it lasts one day, it's not really nice, but when you think that overnight you're recharging, it's enough for a whole day, you're not thinking twice whether it's enough uh, range or I mean like battery for, for, for operation. So charging your car at the slowest speed for 10 hours, if you're not doing long distance driving, I think more than enough for 99% of the people. However, there are public charges of one and three phase, and they give you one phase uh, charge approximately at seven kilowatt an hour. So seven kilowatt an hour, it's approximately 50 kilometers of range of electricity that you recharge your car in an hour. So if you're in a public charging at one phase at seven kilowatts, it gives you seven kilowatts, which is 50 kilometers every hour you add. So let's say your car charged for four hours, you add 200 kilometers to your range. So again, if you're at work and you arrive empty and you're working for eight hours, you easily add 400 kilometers into your car. Look, that's plenty, plenty of juice, even if you are traveling long distances. So the fastest charger in uh, AC um, uh, method, it's uh, 12 kilowatts, which is uh, charged at 11.7, 11.9. I would call it 11 kilowatt charger. Um, and that adds you 80 kilometers an hour. So every hour that you charge in a car at 12 kilowatt charger adds you around 80 kilometers of range. Um, that's plenty as well, but that's not a fast charger. Let's move towards fast chargers. Fast chargers are DC chargers, and my slowest local uh, fast charger charges you at 30 kilowatts an hour. 30 kilowatts an hour, it's 200 kilometers an hour. So every hour you charge in at the slowest fast charger, it's 200 kilometers. So in two hours you can travel 400 kilometers. Next level of cheapest fast charger is 50 kilowatts. 50 kilowatts, if your car accepts 50 kilowatts charge, basically you're charging at rate of 350 kilometers an hour. So if your battery takes all the charge, in two hours you can travel 700 kilometers. Not too bad. And the fastest uh, charge in my area is um, 150 uh, kilowatts uh, per hour charge. My car does not accept that. It's accept up to 84 um, uh, kilowatts an hour. So at, uh, even if charge is 150 kilowatts, my car accepts only 84 and this is 600 kilometers an hour. So basically, first of all, an hour I will charge battery full and second, I can travel around 600 kilometers, but I can't. Capacity of my battery is 64 kilowatts and in the city driving is enough for four, 550 kilometers. In the highway driving, it's around 440. So let's say the range anxiety, not such thing if you adapt your car to your needs. And um, that's uh, what video is all about. I just wanted to let people know 
that electricity in electricity out is a simple exercise and if you think that your car is fit for purpose you have never wrenched anxiety in your car i hope this video you find helpful and if you like this video my channel if you're first time here please hit like subscribe and i really appreciate it greg from brisbane australia until next time thank you